Okay, this is the last uh, set of quotes in the letter B, and we're going to be doing Pearl Buck and then William F. Buckley. So Pearl Buck was a writer, and here's a couple quotes by her. To find joy in work, she lived from 1892 to 1973. To find joy in work is to discover the fountain of youth. Yeah, if you can find a job you really like, you're so lucky. I mean, like I said, I would do, I would do tele radiology, never tele uh, nutrition and health for a third of what I make with conventional medicine, and I would be real happy with that. Um, okay, she goes on. The secret of joy in work is to be contained in one word: excellence. I would actually say the secret of joy in work is you feel like you're doing something useful. Um, and it's nice to be good at it, but you feel like you're doing something useful. You got a purpose. To know how to do something well is to enjoy it. You cannot make yourself feel something that you do not feel, but you can make yourself do the right thing in spite of your feelings. And I think that's a little bit like saying you can't control whether or not you're attracted to somebody. You can't control whether or not you love somebody. That's not in your control, but you can control your decision to be kind and nice to anybody. Yeah. Okay. She continues, when good people in any country cease their vigilance, then evil men prevail. And that's a little bit of a spoof on, um, on Burke, right? Edmund Burke, you know. Uh, the only thing it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Okay, so, all right, her next quote. Truth is exciting. Speak it then. Life is boring without it. Yeah, it's nice to have the truth instead of always be wimpy, BS liar. Okay, so now we're doing William F. Buckley. He lived from 1925 to 2008. Okay, here's his first quote. You cannot paint the Mona Lisa by assigning one dab to a, th a thousand painters. Okay, now if you look at that quote, it tells you why I think William F. Buckley is kind of a lightweight. Okay, so he thinks he's being profound. What he's basically saying is something good that, you know, great artistic achievements, intellectual achievements, they don't come from committees. Okay, that's true and that's good. But look what a pussified statement he's making here. He's saying the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is a piece of crap painting. It's this fat, ugly woman who looks like a transvestite. It's kind of disgusting, okay? And the only reason Da Vinci gets all this praise, I think, is because he's a homosexual. Da Vinci is not that great of an artist, okay? Let's stop saying Da Vinci's so great as an artist. Compare Da Vinci to Michelangelo. There's no comparison. Da Vinci, his best painting is The Last Supper. And it's, yeah, it's a little nice. It was featured in the book Da Vinci Code. But that's about it. His paintings are not that good. Yes, he could draw very well. He was sort of ahead of his time for, you know, accurate representation. But... He doesn't do a good job of putting emotion into his paintings. He's kind of a cold potato, and his art is boring. It's dull. The best thing he did was The Last Supper. Nobody really wants that on their dorm wall, okay? Whereas Michelangelo, the creation of Adam, the Sistine Chapel, the Pieta, it's magnificent, okay? It's, it's you know, it's, it's sublime. There's no comparison. Michelangelo's a million times better than him. Raphael's a million times better than him. Like I said, he's sort of the the glamour boy of the left, so they love uh, Da Vinci because he's sort of an, an out-of-the-closet homosexual, so he gets all this praise and credit. But Michelangelo was orders of magnitude better than him, so was tons of other artists. They're, they're not even, he's not even in their league, okay? Uh, okay, the next thing is, um, William F. Buckley now continues. So the fact, what I'm trying to say is, saying that Mona Lisa and Da Vinci are great artists is kind of like saying, well, Picasso... Da Vinci's better than Picasso, but it's like whenever I hear somebody say Picasso's great art, it's like, Picasso stinks, okay? Picasso's part of this modern art nonsense. So don't be fooled by that. Okay, um, the duel between Christianity and atheism. This is William F. Buckley continuing. The duel between Christianity and atheism is the most important in the world. And the struggle between individualism, individualism and collectivism is the same struggle reproduced at another level. Okay, so what's that all about? Basically, there's two powerful forces in the world. One of them is Christianity. That's the powerful force for good. The other powerful force in the world is atheism, which is really like the religion that goes with atheistic Darwinism, that goes with communism. Now, most of the proles are so stupid, they don't even understand what's happening. Basically, the billionaires of the world, they think the world is overcrowded. And they need an excuse to get rid of the proles because there's too many proles. And the only way they can get rid of the proles is if they can establish atheistic Darwinism as the official religion and culture of the society. Because it says that whoever runs the show can do whatever they want. And so the proles don't even understand, and a lot of proles think they're clever when they say they're an atheist. They don't even understand. What they are saying is that their life is insignificant with no meaning like an insect and should be removed to make the world a less polluted place, okay? So 
Buckley is actually totally correct when he says this. And the reason why atheistic Darwinism hates Christianity is because Christianity says the opposite. Christianity says, no, 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 the richest person should not get to be the boss. God is the boss. All of us are equal in the eyes of God. Our lives have meaning. We have a soul. We're part divine. We're creating the image of God. Okay, so those are opposites, okay? Most people don't understand that. And that's why they, they can't make sense out of anything. You have to get that. That is the fundamental decision. And you can look at all these other cultures and religions, and the bottom line is they're not going to change anything, okay? Okay, somebody likes Buddhism, fine, enjoy, enjoy it, okay? But that's not going to change anything. What's going to decide whether mankind is, is just an animal who deserves to be handled like a livestock or not is whether or not Christianity continues, okay? It's just a fact. Um, there is no God in most of these Eastern religions like Buddhism and Confucianism and some of these other isms, Hinduism. You know, I, you, you know, I don't, I'm no expert on them, but I, what I can tell you is, you know, Christianity put an end to slavery, okay? You still have the caste system in India. You know, lots of super nice, highly intelligent people from India, but they're not Hinduism and Buddhism and Confucianism. None of that is going to prevent atheistic Darwinism from just taking over the entire world and putting everybody in slavery. They, they just don't have the ability to do it. Christianity does, okay? The only problem with Christianity is most Christians are, you know, illiterate, <laughs> functional illiterates, basically, and they don't even know what's going on, so uh, they're clueless. All right, but anyways, he did make a good quote. I'll give him credit when he does something good. Um, if only the left hated crime as much as they hate hate, so to speak. Okay, liberals are generous with other people's money, except when it comes to questions of national survivor. Then they prefer to be generous with other people's freedom and security. Okay, so this is him going into all this stuff. Okay, William F. Buckley continues, In the hands of a skillful indoctrinator, the average student thinks only, that the indoc only what the indoctrinator wants him to think but is altogether positive that he has arrived at this position by his own independent intellectual exertion. Yeah, that's what I mean by like when I hear somebody say, oh, you know, religious people are stupid. Everybody knows that there is no God atheism. I'm like, you know, pal, study a little biology. Study the human eye. Study the immune system. Study the clouding system. Study the flagella. Study any of these irreducibly complex systems. Okay, where did the information come from? Look at the, the DNA code. Okay. He continues, the socialist state is to justice, order, and freedom what the Marquis de Sade is to love. What's wrong with communism was not poor leadership. It was communism. And that's true because it's the same anywhere it goes. Anywhere it goes, it just brutalizes the people. A few aristocrats at the top take everything, and everybody else just gets brutalized and enslaved. That's what always happens. And here's a good line by Buckley. He says, what would happen if the Soviets took over the Sahara Desert? Nothing would happen for 50 years. Then after that, there would be a shortage of sand. And that's about right. Whatever they touch, they screw it up and they make it suck. So anyways, um, I hope that was helpful and interesting.